I'm going to start looking at the design for manufacturer on the base. So let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, one of the considerations would be that this is a pretty big chunk of steel. And we put it at the uh, the 1020, I think it called out 1023. So go to the, uh, to the front. This arc, if this is a casting, which uh, most manufacturing, unless you're doing a lot of... Uh, a lot of pieces the casting isn't as available or cost efficient i know that there are companies that deal with these castings and as a sand casting uh, i don't know that this is intricate enough to do lost wax or anything like that so to make the uh, the pattern and uh, put it in sand and pour cast iron into a uh, mold and have it uh, generate most of this shape to where you would only be finished machining the bores, the um, um, maybe the uh, the groove or the uh, the relief in the center and the grooves on the uh, the base. Um, you know that's um, that's one thing with modern or you know maybe uh, the latest uh, CNC equipment. Um, I don't know that that is going to be the uh, the best choice. So one of the things I'd want to look at is. Let's um, go ahead and remove that so that I can uh, suppress it out. And what I want is a, uh, a 3D sketch. And 3D sketches are handy. I will still say uh, make sure that you get comfortable with the, um, the, the concepts and the relations and everything else that's going on uh, before you try to tackle these so let's see so I get the um, kind of that floating origin and by hitting the uh, the tab key it's going to let me change uh, change directions for the uh, for the sketches and the inference lines are giving me some of that uh, reference to the existing geometry and the 3D sketches are good up to a point, and then at some point they'll lose their mind and start creating geometry. So instead of a vertical horizontal, I get a long Y. And if I come back over here, it's already inferred a long Y. So let's go back into the line command, and we'll bring one back this way. And what I'm trying to do is build just a sort of standard envelope. So if that goes that way, notice that if I'm off at an angle, I get kind of a vector geometry of the, in this case, the Z and the X coordinates. And then I'll bring it over back this way and tie this in. And since that tied in a little bit of an angle, looking at our reference triad, then this would be a long X. And if we rotate over a little bit, Okay, hitting the tab key once more puts me in X, Y, and I can go from that corner or the origin back to one of my points. That'll be a long Y. And let's go ahead and escape. Now there's a, um, should be in contact. I can't really assume that it's going to be in contact, but I should be able to put tangent to that radius. And then... Uh, maybe see what we get if we select those two. So I have midpoint and coincident. Coincident may work really well and then again may not. So just generating that basic shape, I get a chunk of steel that is... See what's going on with my screen capture there. There we go. The 50 millimeters, so about two inches by oh, 100 millimeters, almost four inches, by 220. So yeah, we're, we got a pretty good sized chunk of steel here. So what we'd be looking at is if this was a billet piece with or without the, uh, the fillet, it's going to weigh uh, quite a bit. So let's go back into the, um, yeah, the front plane would work. And just want a quick um, 
kind of a encapsulating chunk of uh, stock here. And so if we right click and extrude and we pick up to the vertex. All right, so if I merge the result, then a positive into a positive yields no net effect. It's going to weigh what it weighs. So that's what I'm looking for as a mass property on this. So when I go evaluate, I can do the mass properties. And this being a chunk of uh, steel has um, 8.4 kilograms, 8,429 grams. Uh, so that's a pretty heavy um, uh, mass there. The other thing would be in our solid body. Let's um, go back in and edit that real quick. And I can reuse this by generating another line and we'll make it a contour and region kind of deal. And that will probably at least generate an error. And as exit sketch and rebuild is fine. Yes, I know that there's an error. I was expecting it. And you'll get to a point where the errors that pop up and the things that are going on are really not that big of a deal. There's kind of an expectation as you're going through this process that you make start making changes and doing the uh, the geometry that it's going to uh, have those issues and uh, be prepared to correct for it. All right, so I turned off the merge result. I started at this face and brought it out. So that's the amount of material that we would loosely have to remove, not counting the corners, which we'll talk about separately. So if we do that, and trying to remember how to do the, uh, the mass property for the body. Include hidden bodies and components. Maybe that's what I want to do is hide the, the last fillet. Or actually, I could probably um, uh, suppress all those. All right, so that's my body. And go in to evaluate. And if I tell it not to include, then, well, according to that, we're removing uh, 4.7 kilograms of, of material that's basically going to be um, waste or drop. Or, you know, if we were able to wire EDM that out, we might be able to make something else out of it. Uh, but in most cases, that's just going to turn to dust and and not be anything that um, is readily usable. So let's go back and show our base, and then we'll hide the uh, uh, the material to be removed, and go back into the mass properties. And so we're at two kilograms. So we said we started at eight. Uh, we basically accounted for six. So removing whatever's um, uh, whatever's left in the uh, the pocket that's going to uh, be the remaining material so the other question then uh, let's do that one more time so I get uh, we had two just over two uh, two kilograms two thousand grams so let's do a what if scenario where we turn this over to 6061 and I don't have that material in my favorites list, so we'll add it. So we'll turn off the, uh, the steel. I could also set up a uh, configuration where doing this study, I would have an aluminum piece versus a steel piece and I uh, could compare those, those items. So the cost difference, um, the 50 series, the 20, the 3000 series, um, have greater ductility, different uh, levels of corrosion resistant. 6061 is kind of our all-purpose general use um, uh, alloy. You get into the 7000 series, then you're into the aircraft grades, higher strength, um, less ductility, uh, more corrosion resistance. And let's go ahead and add that to the favorites. So we'll show up next time. And then close. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, 
I didn't get it applied before I did that, but we'll go ahead and apply it now. And then when I come back to evaluate, now we're going to be looking at a mass property that's you know almost uh, a third. Yeah, maybe. Um, uh, well, we were at two kilograms. Now we're at 0.7, so less than half. Let's put it that way. All right. So those are the choices, and based on the strength and what this is doing, can we really justify this deal? If we're making thousands of these, and the cast iron is uh, a good um, uh, molding, and we can get these um, at a at a reasonable price, then uh, we will uh, spec those in. But more than likely, we're going to end up building this out of aluminum. So the uh, the next uh, next choice is: Do we really need these angles? Angles are nice, uh, radiuses are nice, but prismatic shapes are cheap. Er. <laughs> so when we come back to um, let's go ahead and suppress that out. Uh, maybe I'll use that. Come back to, um, to that one. We'll hide that out. Uh, let's see. I need to unsuppress and edit that sketch. All right, so what I really want to do here is pick up these edges and more than likely that's going to generate a zero thickness error which you don't see too much of but they do, still do show up. And we'll S key convert entities and that gives me a, a different region to uh, a couple of regions to work with. So if I go back in and I edit and we change the from back to the sketch plane and the up to vertex we could go up to surface would be fine and then our regions we clear out and select to just square this off. All right, so it was left without the merge, so I ended up with a couple of extra solid bodies. No big deal. We go back in and edit it. And once we jump in, we'll merge the result. All right, and I don't anticipate that there were any, um, any mate relations along those edges, so that, that shouldn't do anything. The interior geometry complex pocket. If I wanted to um, uh, to remove that weight, uh, we could still skeletonize it. I don't know that I would follow this geometry, or I might just um, pick up a, a nice shape that follows around. So I'm going to leave that for now. Uh, the other thing we were at 0.7, so let's do a quick um, a quick check. If I were to suppress that, we made, you know, if we make the decision. And then this is where we're going to use the point two. So the fillet is a child feature. So when I suppress, and uh, what I was looking at there is this pop up is what happens when we go to the dynamic references. And I think of them that they're pointing to the parent and the child relations uh, that are tied to those sketches or to those features. So if I suppress that out, Uh, we go back to evaluate and I go to the mass properties adding that material back in half a kilogram so if I need that mass for uh, vibration or rotation uh, you know anything that's um, you know maybe generating a harmonic frequency you probably leave it so I'm gonna go back and suppress that fillet one can be unsuppressed as well and it cleans it up and that would be an additional way to bring this uh, weight savings would be to bring this up and follow this contour. Maybe leave, since we're in metric, 12 millimeters, about a half an inch in all of these areas. Uh, chamfer around over the corners and uh, be able to work with that. All right, so the other issue of sorts is that we're still removing a lot of material. And I don't know that I have to have this as... A single piece. So rather than remove that volume, I would be looking at making this a two piece unit and bolting it together. So the choice is to redraw it or to start from a, um, a process that um, will basically split these and we'll use our solid bodies to create two separate parts. 
Right, so as I'm going through these um, through these steps, my thought process is, well, let's see if we can just do a um, a basic cut here. So if I wanted to um, generate um, a shape, let's see maybe on the bottom would be a good place to place it. And then I can pick up that edge, and that was the reason I suppressed the uh, the fillet early on, is that's also going to either be a ball end mill or or a uh, or a corner radius tool that's going to have to run along and generate that uh, that shape, so uh, that geometry. So we put that in, and if I go to make that a cut, then we do the extrude cut. We're going to have to pick a side, so one one of these is going to go away. That doesn't really um, uh, help me as far as generating our our shape. The through all cut and it removing. I could make this like a thousandth of an inch wide um, rectangle, but that ultimately ends up messing up my tolerances just a little bit. So, all right. So the other one would be to uh, look at. Uh, a split line, which actually I think I can use that for the split line if it'll let me have it back. Oh, I closed it. <laughs> All right, so let's unsuppress that. So the problem with uh, closing as opposed to um, to deleting is there wasn't anything to undo. So we'll put our sketch back in. And a split line is more functional as far as uh, creating drafts, it really is a, a molding tool that uh, we can go through. And if I had um, had the draft, oops, and I did not get that in there. So let's um, make sure that while I'm talking, I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. So convert that edge there, we can see the line. All right, we could have picked um, probably that edge a little bit easier. All right, so under the features, we go into curves. I look at creating a split line, and it is a silhouette, a projection, or an intersection, and I attach it to that face, then pretty much what it's doing is it's creating two faces. So if I wanted to put draft on this way and then draft the other way, um, that would allow me, but it doesn't create two separate bodies there. So that's uh, not going to be helpful. And so that leaves me with a, um, an intersect tool. And there's uh, plenty of videos on the intersection uh, or intersect. And let's go into the front plane. I'm going to do a control drag of that plane out some distance. It's going to be parallel and we're going to be at a point. So a while back and somewhere I still have a screenshot of the old definitions, but it actually had words like parallel plane at a point and uh, creating those, uh, those geometry. So this plane is going to become my cutting tool. So one quick um, cut would be to cut with surface. And if I pick that uh, that plane as my cutting surface, it still wants to give me one side or the other. So that cut is really locked into removing uh, geometry. And I don't want to remove both sets of geometry. I just want to uh, create a separate body. And I think there's one other tool that I'm, uh, I'm overlooking, uh, but this will kind of give, uh, give you some direction on um, at least getting started with this. So under the features and intersect, uh, we're going to create a plane and then pick the body and internal regions, intersecting regions. Well, let's see what it does on the intersect. So region one, we're going to keep and region two, we're going to keep. Oh, was that the oh, regions to exclude? No, we want to, we want both of those. All right, so since both of those disappeared, that would have been bad. And merging the result after we did that wasn't really isn't going to be really productive. So let's see what we get. 
All right, so I have intersect one, the lower portion, and intersect two, the upper portion. So the way this mounts, I'm looking at putting geometry in from this side. I could have easily have done it this way and put the geometry from the uh, the bottom, but this being a um, the the carry surface, I feel pretty confident that I can get this face, which is in the uh, the surfaces of the uh, the bores. Uh, for the uh, for the bearings uh, to be perpendicular to this edge, if I machine those all in one uh, one setup, or have it in uh, a setup where this becomes uh, the datum reference. All right, so if I hide that, then that gives me a shape. This is going to be easier to hold on to. I'm not going to have to do any custom fixturing, and my geometry comes back to maybe we'll hide this so hitting the tab key. I want to generate uh, some locations. So sketch, now I could pin this and uh, I'm going to do this maybe a little more complicated than it needs to be just to illustrate a um, you know pretty cool little um, uh, function of the, uh, the direct editing. So let's go into the sketch and I'll create a center line. And we'll go midpoint to midpoint. And then um, S key, I want some points, and I want to be able to see this uh, hidden lines visible so I don't get into the uh, the slots or don't get into them too much. Uh, so the a um, uh, couple of options is to uh, put a maybe a quarter 20 uh, along this, um, you know, in a couple places. And then... Uh, either a uh, dowel pin. Uh, I've also seen where we've done shoulder bolts. Shoulder bolts are not always completely concentric. They're very close to the to the thread and to the shoulder. Uh, the heads uh, often have a, quite a bit of run out. Um, we can also um, generate a, uh, a lip. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a couple of these locations. And for our purposes, this will be uh, before the um, the threaded hole locations. So I'm going to go ahead with one more center line so that I can utilize the uh, the symmetry for these guys. And I'll select Control Select. I could have as easily mirrored it, but I didn't start out thinking that way. So we will go with symmetry and then select control select see if it pops up there we go and make symmetric all right so when i apply these i'm uh, fine going from the edge um, i mentioned quarter 20s that's kind of my default um, so um, m5 by 0.7 m6 by uh, 1.0s um, yeah, I could, go, I could see uh, an M6. And I start off dimensioning if I ended up needing to go back the other way or going between the, uh, the two. I can always work with the driven dimensions and right click. Uh, let's see, let's go back into select. And then when I right click, I should be able to check for driven and uncheck for driving and just reverse those if I needed to. So it gives me an option. Um, I always uh, kind of go back to the design for convenience. Be careful with, um, with some of these geometries because uh, they can sneak up on you. By shifting that over a little bit, I think I can get a pin in there if I need it. All right, so I drew this pretty much on the intersecting face, just as a convenient spot to um, to pick those up at. And so what that's going to do for me, so let's just make this a, um, a fastener layout. And again, name it um, what makes sense to you, uh, something that you can uh, can remember and will work with. All right, so uh, for this side, we're going to go to the uh, S key 
and pick the hole wizard. And it's going to be a threaded hole. We're going to pick for the ANSI metric. I'm going to find, scroll and find, oh, maybe not that fast. <laughs> An M6 by 1.0. And the nice thing about the whole wizard, if I decide this needs to be an M8, I can move these in a little bit because we're going to be really close to um, uh, to that wall. And still have material there, but uh, a little closer than I would like. Uh, blind in condition, we are to the uh, to the shoulder. So the thread is showing as 15 millimeters deep, and 12 millimeters on the thread should be pretty good. And depending on what we end up with for our depths, went to the um, front view for me. So four, three would be kind of my minimum. Uh, two would be if I had to. Um, four just gives me good, um, uh, consistent uh, compression all along that face. All right, so you can see even the M6 looks a little bit close to that edge, but I think there's enough there to um, uh, to suffice. All right, and then what that's going to do on the uh, other intersecting body is if we come back and we hide that one. And one of the reasons that I hide is that um, when it picks the uh, I'll have to go look and see what it's uh, what it's called again. When it uh, does the uh, the selection of uh, what these geometries are going to affect, what the whole wizard is going to be applied to, then um, it always hides out at the bottom and the feature scope. That was what I was trying to think of. So if it auto-selects and it auto-selects everything, it's a little more cumbersome than saying, you know, I just want to put these counterbores through this part. All right, so uh, be aware of the uh, the feature scope. So this is going to be a counterboard hole. Uh, we're not going to do hex bolts. Hex bolts get uh, quite a bit larger. So if we can stay with the uh, the socketed cap screw, sizes for an M6, fit is normal, and so close is going to close up a little bit, and then the um, Blind in condition, or the um, uh, in condition will go to up to next. And so things like up to next or through all, the feature scope really becomes important because it will go all the way through both bodies if it's part of this scope. And then the tolerance and precision, through hole diameters, tolerances if we need to apply them. Um, but really I worry about those at the, uh, the drawing level, not so much at this level. So one of the first things that pops up, my initial choice for the um, counterbore, and usually these are enough oversized that um, we can shrink the shrink them down a little bit, or we can just cut out that corner a little bit. But this is pretty um, pretty thin, even for uh, for that size. So it's one of the considerations that we'd want to do. I don't know that I would um, send this bolt all the way through, and based on our depth. Just doing a quick calculation of the uh, the face, and I still don't know what's going on with my screen capture. But 12 millimeters there. We went 12 millimeters on the other side. So if I was to pick something like a 20 millimeter uh, length, the um, uh, 19 millimeter would be uh, close to a one to to one. You know, six millimeters to about seven millimeters on the. Um, Six millimeters on the diameter to seven millimeters is a one-to-one -one ratio. I'd like to be a little bit deeper than that. So pretty much um, if I can get a 25 millimeter long uh, M6 in there, I can uh, I can work on the uh, the depth. All right, so let's uh, adjust the, uh, the face just a little bit. We'll go ahead and leave that there and hide it. So mentioned that I could put a couple of pins in there. The other thing is, since this doesn't appear to be super critical, uh, we can go along and let's show that temporarily. 
So the um, 12 millimeters, and then I'll just hit the tab real quick to hide that, and just double checking my my numbers. Let's see. So what else is showing here? Nope, that was part of the uh, part of the body. Then wasn't sure why that was. Uh, looked like one of the uh, the edges was still lighted. Anyway, so this is some place where we can actually use that that split line. So I'm gonna open. Oh, I got the new sketch. Control eight will send me normal to L on the keyboard to create the line. Um, I could tie this to the um, to the other face. So I'll go ahead and um, show temporarily so that I can pick up the vertex and the endpoint. And those could be coincident. I could also do collinear. All right. So if this changes height and starts to change, this geometry will change with it. Okay, so tab on the keyboard to hide that body. We're going to use that as the split line. So back into the features, into curves, split line. We're generating on that face. So the, um, I'm going to say the small advantage to this over the cut extrude and changing the other one uh, is that uh, modifying a, a boss base feature and modifying uh, a cut extrude also would change things like the layout geometry. It could potentially um, mess with those. Uh, direct editing, on the other hand, if we go to, and I don't see it, so we'll need to find it. Usually I have that turned on, but not this time. So since we're there, I'll go ahead and turn the sheet metal. So that would be another consideration, but the thickness, uh, this is too much thickness for, for sheet metal. It depends on uh, you know how much it, it would carry. So if I move this face and pick my geometry, I'm just going to do a straight offset. The translate gives you uh, quite a bit more functionality in the rotate. Um, can do quite a bit. So let's just make it easy and go one millimeter. And I'm not seeing a preview there, so I thought I could do this on the face. Well, let's see what kind of error it gives me. Okay, failed to move faces, distance, angle, or changing the direction. Ah, so it Pop that one up. Nope, still didn't uh, want to move the face. So I might have to cut that one out after all. So the other um, uh, other geometry. Okay, so split line did not do exactly what I wanted it to do. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that feature. I thought I'd done that before, but apparently not. So we'll just go into the sketch since it's already generated. And I'll just close that off and we, we will cut it. Um, the, um, the other side, we'll see what happens when we, um, when we move. So again, if being an iterative process, we're going to uh, address those um, those assumptions and those mistakes as uh, as they get made. So let's go ahead with the features. Do a cut. Uh, let's see where did you go? Extrude cut. We're going to cut it back one millimeter. And hopefully it'll catch up here. Okay, so the one millimeter on the cut will hide that side. Show the other side. 
and then I'm going to attempt the direct editing again and move the face and we'll offset it by one millimeter and if I zoom up on this I can see which way it's going All right, so that increases that side, decreases that, and gives it a lip to set on. All right, so when we think about the tolerances, we would need this to be uh, a certain thickness or know what the material thickness is here and possibly increase that, um, that edge just a little bit. So there again, because of the tolerances, I'm going to... Uh, go ahead and wing it out here to where that edge has, um, let's see, if we did um, half a millimeter, that would be about 20,000, so I have to do the conversion, so direct editing, move face, um, so we'll give it um, point, uh, 0.2 millimeters is about 8 thousandths, and if I flip the direction, so what it's going to do is give me a visual reference, but I don't want to put this in bind. I want this face and the bottom face of that lower portion uh, to sit even in this act as a, as a reference, as a relief. And if something were to happen uh, with the, uh, the thickness, that this would, um, would be able to come in contact. So when we do our tolerance stack up, and look at what we're going to give on the thickness. We want it to match that, that our worst case scenario, those are in contact, but gives a visual reference along that edge that it is in line. So everything looks like it rebuilt correctly. So interesting that, uh, oh, I gotta show that. And then if we go into the hidden lines removed, the nice thing is that those will line up. I'll have to grab an M6 and measure the uh, the head so that I can go back into this one and I think I can get away with when it pops up here we have the whole specification oh, that was the, um, the threaded hole so that's okay needed the counter bore All right, so there's all these little decisions going on as, uh, as we go through this process. Check and recheck. And we had the, uh, the fit size. So if I go to custom sizing, through hole at 6.6, .6, 11 millimeters. Well, we would want to measure that and see if we could get to 10 millimeters. All right, but that's going to take care of some of those line to line right on the edge. So that went to zero thickness geometry. Interesting. So... Pretty much that size, five millimeters. Okay, that makes sense. So it either has to cut through. I mentioned the zero thicknesses do pop up occasionally. So 9.8. So one of the quick ways to find out what the uh, head size, I'm pulled that up for uh, the bearing, but I will make that a separate video. Uh, so I want a metric, I want a socketed cap screw, and we're either going to do alloy or 18.8, doesn't really matter, they should be the same size. And we're going to be picking for an M6, we'll see what the lengths are. Uh, we would probably stay with the fully threaded, so at 25 millimeters, that's probably a good one to uh, to check with. Since I'm not in assembly, if I was in the assembly, I could just drag and drop one in. And we go to the uh, to the drawing, and so it comes up with the 10 millimeter. So I'm going to have to adjust uh, for my size. So that should give me about a millimeter on the base. And then we go back into the layout so that I'm modifying off of the layout. And then when we do the rebuild, that should get rid of the zero thickness. So with it being 10 millimeters, 
um, that's not going to um, uh, allow the socketed cap screw to fit and we'll get back into the custom sizing so instead of 10.8 or 9.8 let's go to 10.5 another half a millimeter sets it pretty close but I think that will still allow it to uh, to connect all right so we'll pick up with the uh, the bearings on the uh, the next video and start to look at some of um, you know the downstream effects of our our decisions